if hyperinflation ever came to the country that you're living in, this video could literally change your life. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. We're gonna talk about some history of hyperinflation in Zimbabwe, and then we're gonna talk about eight principles that may help you out in a hyperinflationary period. I wanna start off with a case of a very sad time period in the history of Zimbabwe. And there, they went through a hyperinflationary period. At that time, if you had saved up 10 million Zimbabwe dollars, and uh, this was probably a good retirement for most people, they would have been doing just fine for the rest of their life, saved up over the course of a lifetime. But when hyperinflation really took off, it got to the point where those 10 million Zimbabwe dollars could not buy a single match stick. So all the money you had accumulated over the course of your entire life literally became nothing. Historically, when they have hyperinflation, they want to keep enough order to keep the government in power and at least a modicum of peace in society. Historically, these are two branches of, the, of society that they are going to fund. But as you can imagine, many other aspects of government-funded institutions begin to really, really struggle. One of the groups that really struggled specifically in Zimbabwe when they went through their hyperinflationary period was the prisoners. There wasn't enough money to feed the prisoners, so thousands of them died. And right along with that, much of the infrastructure began to crumble. You look at the water system. Over time, they couldn't even fund purifying the water. As a result, people weren't getting water to their homes, or it was very sporadic. So what people would do is they would store up in large vats. They would buy these big drums or storage containers that they would fill up when the electricity came on, when the water came, so that it would be there when the electricity wasn't functioning or the system wasn't pumping. People who've gone through that, like in Zimbabwe, have said when the water goes out, it's a very depressing experience. Imagine, uh, basically companies like Costco, they have a markup on the products that they buy of about 11%. In some of the stores like Walmart, maybe 25%. Standard supermarkets, somewhere around 30%. So one of the things the government does that hurts these companies is they come in and they put price caps. And you might be thinking, well, no, that would be great if the government came into the companies like Walmart and said, this is as high as you can price your things and you can't go any further. Sounds great, right? Here's the thing. What if they come to Walmart and said, you can only price your product 10% over what they are and imagine the next month that product comes back and it costs 20% more for them than it did last month and if they give you it at the price that's 10% above last month that means they have to give you the product and pay you a little extra to get it and so what happened in places like Zimbabwe is when the government came in and put price caps many companies just had to simply shut down because they were giving their products away and you get the idea. You think, well, that's nice. They're giving products away. But the trouble is then there's nobody around to ship you the products anymore. And so society breaks down because you don't have access to food or clothing or the essentials that you might need. Now, another way that governments can exacerbate hyperinflation, the most obvious way, is by printing more and more money. And as they print more and more money, the worth of the dollar or whatever currency it is just goes down and down and down. And often, once again, they will blame, well, it's the business's fault because they're increasing prices, but they have to increase prices if they want to survive to pay their employees because if they give everything away, once again, they can't even pay their employees. But as a government does this, it's common in history, like I said, for the government officials to say we need price caps and by the way I've actually seen at least one of our government officials saying we need to start putting price caps in the United States I'm not saying we're in hyperinflation uh, I, we're not there yet but we're clearly seeing some of the rumblings of inflation right now one of the things that the government tried to do for whatever reason in Zimbabwe is they begin to separate people, at least trying to get the people to separate themselves into different factions. In this instance, they were trying to separate them into different tribal groups. It's interesting that they were trying to separate society as things began to get more difficult and as inflation was going up. And I also find that interesting that that's taking place in our society also right now, that people are trying to separate people amongst uh, differences of culture, background, race, whatever it is. We see that taking place once again in an inflationary time. As it's been said, history generally doesn't repeat, but it does often 
rhyme. Now I want to talk about nine things that may benefit you or could help you make it through a time of hyperinflation. I'm not saying we're going through that now or that we even will, but what could you do if it did come to the country that you were living in? Number one, one of the things that becomes a simple way of life during hyperinflation is learning to barter. People have to barter because as the as the worth of the currency becomes nearly useless or absolutely useless, people end up having to barter. Having things that you're able to trade with your neighbors, people in your community, can become very, very important. And right along with that is the fact that when you get paid at work in hyperinflationary times, people typically take that money and as fast as they can, even if they can that day, they go spend that money because they know the very next day in a hyperinflationary economy, the very next day, your money could lose half its value. And I'm not exaggerating, it could in the worst times. And so people typically, uh, take what they have, their money, they go and get a tangible object or some food or something so that they can have something to use or to barter with somebody else. Number two is that community becomes an absolute necessity. And Zimbabwe, being that it's a more recent example, is a great illustration of this. The people there, even though the government was trying to kind of separate people and to make them have factions, they were drawing together probably better than any other time in modern history. And so as the community began to be tighter and tighter, this was so important because if your neighbor had some food and you didn't have any food, they were likely to share it with you. Or your neighbor had a product that you didn't have, your neighbors your friends may be able to get you these. With the fact that many of the pensioners or people that are retired, families are really at least loving people are going to come together, they're going to help out their parents, they're going to take care of them. They may have to move in together to really consolidate the funds and, and to help each other out. Now the third thing we're looking at that could be very helpful for you to have during difficult times is having a water source. And I don't mean a municipal water source. If that's all you've got, that's all you've got. But for those who have a well, they are often in a very better place than those who don't. And so if you have a well, you can be not only someone who can take care of your household, but you can help help take care of those who live around you. Municipal water, hopefully it'll last, but in some of these cases in history, it just didn't last. And so that's a great option. Now, the fourth thing that can be very important in hyperinflationary times is having foreign currencies or alternative currencies that don't go into the hyperinflationary mode. And so having those can be great. The trouble is some of the countries, what they do is in the times of hyperinflation, they outlaw any kind of external funds like you know other, other dollars from other nations because they know if people turn away from their dollar, it's just gonna hyperinflate even worse. And so that's the difficulty that re people really struggle with. They're like, well, do I follow the dictates of this government that is really hurting everybody and they're, they're destroying our, our currency? or do I use it? And so, uh, you know, in general though, one of the great things to do is putting your money into a foreign currency that is not hyperinflating can help stabilize your funds so you don't have to worry as much about that. Number five, one of the great things you can do is to grow your own food. Obviously, I'm on Health and Homestead and we talk about that all the time. People can do that in the city by going over to neighbors' properties and, and saying, hey, look, I'll work on the back of your property and uh, I'll grow some food for you. And also, if you'll let me take food, if they're not using their backyard and that can be a way to do it in the city obviously during hyperinflationary times people are going to be more prone to stealing that's why being out in the country during those time periods makes it much safer not perfectly safe but significantly safer than living in the midst of a, a congested city but one of the reasons you do this is number one it supports you with your own food your own sustenance calories nutrition and health but also it can make you an anchor person in society. You can be a person who can help out the community around you. In other times of hyperinflation, this is what they found, that having food is always a form of currency. It's a way that, yes, you can help out your neighbors, but you can also use it to trade with others so that you can acquire the things that you need. Another great asset to have during that time period goes right along with gardening, is saving seeds, saving plenty of seeds for you and your family, but having ample more because other people who may not be able to acquire them, they may not have enough money, having enough seeds to help out the community around you. They could be used as currency. They could be used, some of them can be used as food, but you don't want to use most of them up as food because, well, then you can't use them to plant again. Seeds are a phenomenal way to help your family and those around you. One of the sources of fuel that you can use, not for driving around necessarily, but keeping your family warm, 
is having wood heat, having plenty of trees on your property. That's why being out in the forest is a nice place to be, or, or even some farmland with a few acres of trees can be a real benefit having that to heat your family. And if you have enough acreage, you could sell some of the timber so that you could be making some income also for the future necessities. It's been said that during hyperinflationary periods, morality typically wanes terribly because people become seekers of, of just their desperate needs. And because of that, they'll steal, they'll kill, they'll become violent, whatever they need to do to get what they need. But that wasn't as much of a case in Zimbabwe, fascinatingly enough. And when it's been looked into, they, they tried to figure out why were the people of Zimbabwe, the government seemed to be trying to pit the people against each other, but why were they, in general, they weren't very violent. There would be some theft here and there. They might come and they say they would steal the, a gate on your property uh, to trade it, the metal to get some scrap. They wouldn't come in and break into your house most of the time. And it's because they really didn't want to hurt people. They were just trying to make it by. So when it's been studied to find out why didn't the Zimbabweans lose their morality so much, it, they say that it's evidently their Christian experience. These people seem to be faithful Christians. And they, instead of turning apart from each other, like I said, they drew closer to each other. We should seek to help other people out. And once again, not focusing on money. We don't find peace as we're constantly focusing on money. The difficulty is in those times, it's natural for us to have to, but we're told that we can have great peace even in very difficult situations. So I would challenge you, go forward. I'm not saying this is coming anytime soon. I studied these things out personally because I wanted to know, hey, what if this did come to the nation that I'm in or wherever I'm living? I'd like to know because knowing the history can help you not fall into the trap of going into the same pitfalls of the past. I'm gonna have some links for two powerful books that I've that I've been going through on this particular subject on hyperinflation through history. I mean, unbelievably powerful information. I'll have the, the affiliate links down below. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications. God bless and have a fantastic day.